So over the past month, I've built two AI apps that are now live and are going to make me millions of dollars in 2025. And this is the first one, it's, it's called Clonify and it basically can clone any single person in the entire world. Here's a quick example. Folks, Folks let, let me tell, tell you about, about maple, maple syrup. syrup. It's, it's tremendous, tremendous, absolutely, absolutely tremendous. tremendous. We, we also have this stock investments app that can literally tell us about any stock in the world. So this is Tesla, for example. And if I go, should I buy this stock? It'll give me all of this information. And there's also insider trading information and all of this fun stuff. And today we're gonna be building building this thing called cal.ai and I stumbled across this app the other day because this YouTube channel that I follow made a podcast of the founder and they're making 1.12 million dollars a month by selling this calorie tracking app and today you and I are going to build it from scratch and we're going to make it a little bit better than what they're already selling with their own cal.ai app and we're going to do it completely with no code in this entire video and when this video is done guys we're then going to show you how to add authentication how to add Stripe payments and how to actually start receiving payments from your applications like we have on our own apps here. Now, looking at this app, what are the functionalities? Functionalities is that you take a picture of your food and it'll give you the calories, protein, carbs, and fat in your meal. And so we're gonna be doing that and we're also gonna be charting it into a graph. Let's head into Bolt and let's get this baby started. So I'm gonna write, I want to build a web app based calorie tracker sent to chat GPT bond with a sentence and the macro nutrients in fat and carbs. <clears throat> so we're just going to send that first prompt in and we're going to let Bolt cook that up real quick. So for you guys to actually do this, the only other thing you need other than Bolt is your own ChatGPT API key or Claude API key or whatever large language model that you like to use. And in this case, we're gonna be using the OpenAI uh, API key that can do a multimodal function where it can take pictures and text and so that's how we're going to you know, make this thing work. So the first thing that it did for us was build up the environment for us to actually add our API key. So I'm just gonna quickly go into the environment and add in our API key. So I'm literally just going to pass the API key to Bolt right here in the description. And I'm gonna say, this is my open AI key, add it to the ENV. Okay, cool. So it did that for us, but I already noticed one error that it did, and that's that it's using the wrong OpenAI model. Right now it's using the vision preview model and that model doesn't exist anymore. So if we go here and we see that the model is the GPT-4 vision, we need to change that to GPT-4.0. So we're just going to write the GPT-4 vision preview is deprecated. Use the GPT-4.0 model instead. It is multimodal and works well for this use case. So yeah, guys, when I was practicing this, that was an absolute nightmare. So that's gonna save us a whole bunch of time. And we saw right there that the model was actually correct. So if we go into this OpenAI TS, we now see that it's calling the uh, GPT-40 um, AI model. So that works well. And so it updated all of the information. So that looks good. And so now we can try uploading our first meal. Um, we're gonna upload this salad bowl. So we're just gonna click open. And as we can see, nothing happens when we click open. So we're just going to let ChatGPT know about that. When I click open time span. Okay, so it added all of those new dependencies. Um, let's see how things look. Okay, so now we have the take photo button, which is really nice. We're gonna add in the image again. We're gonna see what happens, open that up. So there was an error analyzing the food, but basically what we can do to fix this is go into ChatGPT's docs and send in the correct, um, the correct JSON script that we need. So we're just gonna go um, open AI docs. I'm gonna go to this API reference. So we're gonna go into this create chat completion. So inside of this create chat completion, you guys can see here that there's all of these different types of inputs or requests that we can create. So right now my prediction is that it's doing this default request where we gotta do the image input request. So we're going to copy this image input request and then we're gonna send that to both. So we're just going to write, this is the image input request necessary for the GPT-40 model. Okay, let's try uploading. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm gonna attempt that fix. Okay, so I think I found the error, guys. So you see here in the URL, it's changing it to a base 64 image. And sometimes, and basically what's that doing? It's just condensing the image, but we don't actually need to do that. So if this doesn't work, that's what we're gonna tell it to fix next. So we're gonna try opening it. Oh, it's actually analyzing now, okay. Okay, look at that. <laughs> so it worked. Okay, awesome. So we just got an update on our app now. So we have a salad bowl with a soft boiled egg, broccoli, cherry tomatoes, couscous, red bell peppers, almonds, hummus, and greens. So it was able to identify everything that was on the bowl of food. It was able to identify that it had 400 total calories, 15 grams of protein, 20 grams of fat, and 40 grams of carbs. Now we're going to make this even more fine tuned because our users are going to be told how to take the pictures of their food. And so we're going to tell these users, Hey, you should be taking a picture of your food from one foot away every single time. So we're going to let the AI know that. So we're going to say, okay, that worked. But now for more consistent food analysis, uh, food macro, uh, macros analysis, the plate. Okay, so now it added that in the text, right? So here in our text prompt, if we go back to OpenAI TS, we could say this image, we could see that this image was taken from approximately one foot away from the plate of food. Please analyze the food and respond with only a JSON object in this exact format. And then it gives us all of that information that we were asking for. And then since it's coming back in a JSON format, we can pass off the information wherever we need it to go. So it also now notifies the user how they should be taking, uh, how far they should be from when they take the photo if they use the real time. So if I click take photo, it's gonna pull up my real time camera, which is really sick and it shows that the functionality is perfect. So um, we're gonna now send in another type of food. So we're gonna send in this steak. So you open that up, analyzing our food and we got the response. So. The response again was a 400 calories, 50 grams of protein, 25 grams of fat and zero carbs. Now, so one mistake that we can already see guys is that it lost the um, previous meal. So I need to now write it, I need to now let it know to keep track of all the meals. So I need you to create another tab that has the daily macros that a user needs to hit in order to achieve their goals. Also, save all of the food that the user inputs in a 24 hour time span. <clears throat> okay, so we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, so it updated it back with this daily macro goals like form, but we basically just need it to have uh, four different categories that we're gonna edit. So the, the daily macro goals form needs to just have four options to choose from. Calories, fat, protein, and carbs, and then we're gonna send that in. Okay, so, so now we're gonna test that out. So we're gonna write 2000 calories, um, 170 grams of protein, 50 or 75 grams of fat, and 100 grams of carbs. So we're gonna set that as our macro goals. Okay, perfect, so that worked. So now the food that the user is adding into the app, it can now track it and compare it to their daily macro goals. We can then update whether or not they achieved their goals on a given day in a calendar. So now we can add a calendar into this entire dashboard as well. So now we're gonna write, once a user submits, their goals, make a calendar page and add that calendar page as a directory in the nav bar. When a user has a day that um, achieves the daily macro goals, then turn that day on the calendar to green. If they miss their daily macro goals, turn that day on the calendar to red. Okay, so we're just gonna send that in, we'll see what happens. 
Okay, cool. So it updated now. We have our calendar page. So we're going to open that up and we can see that it has all of these different calendars. And it also has a little um, key chart here that'll tell us whether the goals were met on a day, goals were missed on a day, or there was no data on a given day. So that's perfect. Um, there's still some more information we can add to the calendar. Like it doesn't have the month, for example, but that's fine. We're now going to go into this track food and we're going to see what happens in terms of comparing these macros to the total daily macros that we have achieved. So we're going to upload um, a photo of this pizza. I'm going to see what happens. So it's analyzing our food. <clears throat> okay. It gave us uh, 285 calories, 12 grams of protein, 10 grams of fat, and 36 grams of carbs. So I'm not sure exactly how accurate that is. That should have been more calories, but again, that's something we can fine tune a bit. And then also this isn't updating here in, in the daily macro goals. So we need to actually um, you know, update that as well. So it starts showing us the progression bar that we're getting towards our daily macro goals to achieve whatever fitness goal that we want to achieve. Um, so let's add a couple more functionalities, right? So on the track food page, I want you to list the date. Today is December 4th. So the information the user inputs will be charted for December 4th. There should be a timer on the track food page that shows how much time is left before the new day of food tracking begins. Okay, so let's see what happens there. We're gonna be looking for a timer. We're gonna be looking for a couple other things uh, like the date and we'll see what happens here. Okay, perfect. So now it has the date. It also has the time until the next day and then we can start adding in our food. And then so another way that this information can be tracked is when we start adding uh, user authentication. So when a user signs in, we then pull up their information of all the food that they've been eating and their entire calendar of history that they've been eating as well. Um, and so that's how that'll end up keeping track of things. And then once this timer runs out, then that daily tracker will then move on to that next day. So right now I'm, I'm assuming that it's on December 4th. So um, now I'm going to write, since it's December 4th, when I upload food on the track food bar, it should also update on the calendar page on the fourth of the month. Okay, so now let's see what happens. So we're going to upload that uh, bowl of salad again, um, analyzing our food. Okay, so we got the pie chart back with the calories, the protein, whatever. Boom, so now we're looking in the calendar and this is a red calendar block because it still hasn't met the goals of the uh, day. So to meet the goals of the day, let's see what happens if we just upload all of the food that we need to hit those macro goals. So, and okay, so we are over the 2000 calories, but we're still not over the protein goal. So now let's add in the eggs, uh, the salad with eggs again. Okay, boom, so 2500 calories over 170 grams of protein, over 75 grams of fat, and over 100 grams of carbs. So now if we go to the calendar page, this page should be green. So now that um, the goals have been met, this should turn green. So we're just going to update it now and say uh, daily macro goals are surpassed on a given day. Turn that calendar block to green. Okay, so it just updated that. So it still has all of the food that we just updated it with. And we're going to go to our calendar. And as you guys can see, the goals have now been surpassed on the day. Now, these aren't good macros that you actually want to be hitting, right? These are just an example. But now you guys can see that the functionality actually works and this countdown will continue. So now we can also see how this works and we can say, okay, let's assume it is now December 5th store all of the December 4th food and let's now start adding meals for the next day. So let's see what happens. So I'll help you update the application to handle the transition to December 5th. We'll need to modify the date time display components to use a controlled date 
to add the ability to view historical entries. Very interesting. So it's actually giving us the ability to now change what time it is um, and we can kind of start inputting stuff at different dates. So that's pretty cool. It's obviously not something you want your users to have access to, but since we're testing things out, like obviously that's fine. Okay, perfect. So it actually did more than what I asked, right? Because this is now December 4th and it has all of our uh, information of our food, but I'm guessing if I go here to December 5th, which isn't, which is in the future, which I guess doesn't exist, um, we can then add in more information. So that's really dope because we can actually go back in time as well. And we can we can look at the historical data. And obviously there's no historical data for any of these days, but eventually there's going to be historical data and you can start tracking on the days that you did bad and you did good. So that's even more functionality that I didn't even ask for that we got. So now guys, we can upload an image that tracks our calories, our protein, our fat, our carbs. It also compares it to our daily macro goals tracker, which we can update whenever we want. And then it'll also put that into a calendar that'll let us know how consistent we are on a given month in or month out. And there's so many more things that we can add into this, like adding a whole workout plan, adding a whole notification tracker. So if a user isn't uploading or updating the app with information, we can send it a push notification via text or via email to be like, hey, like use our app, like you downloaded it, now use it. Um, and so there's all these, these different features that we can add, but a couple of things that I love that we already we were already able to do here was we have this timer and we also have this <clears throat> beautiful pie chart. And we can even take things a whole 10 steps further because we are just we are just scratching the surface of what's possible with this vision multimodal tool because we can then have it track all of the different ingredients that we use, right? So we could also have it um, identify whether we're using harmful chemicals or not, whether we're using seed oils. And there's so many different ways that we can go about this. And you can even sell this to influencers. And that's a whole part of our business model with our fitness automations agency. And so... This is already pretty functional, but what you guys are going to see next in the next video is we're going to add in a user authentication so that they can sign in. And so when a user signs in, they should then be able to see only the information that they have been inputting, right? So if, if this is user A and this is December 4th, when user B signs in on December 4th, they shouldn't have any of this information because they haven't uploaded any food. And so once that functionality is set up, then that can happen. And then on the back end, we can have a pricing page where people start paying you on a monthly subscription for your service. And so if you guys are interested in how all of that works, as well as how to deploy a website, that's going to be available in the No Code Academy with a specialized tutorial. And then later on, it'll be uploaded here on YouTube. Literally used the exact functionality of a $1.1 million a month app. And we put that into our own Bolt.mu uh, application.